Welcome back to another episode of Taking Stock for the Week, ending the 17th of February, 2023. I'm Ken Trin, and I'm the Head of Research at Stock Doctor. Joining me today is our Equities Analyst, Daniel Ortiz. Thanks for coming along, Dan. Uh, it's great to be here, Kian, in the midst of a busy season, and hopefully our members appreciate this week's episode. Yes, and uh, but before we get started, just a reminder that the information provided today is of a generic nature and therefore shouldn't be considered personal advice. Shares are volatile and any historical performance figures may not represent the future. But then you're right, we are midway through the reporting season and I've begun to see the impact of higher interest rates and inflationary pressures on consumer sentiment and corporate profits. As mentioned in our first episode for the year, we are cautious on the retail sector and believe rallies could represent opportunities for investors to take some profits, especially given that retail sales figures, it plunged 3.9% in December. That's right, Ken. It does seem like the risks in the sector are certainly high. For instance, discretionary stocks like furniture retail Nick Scarly and online platform Temple and Webster disappointed the market with their subdued outlook guidance. The consumer spending environment does appear to be challenging, and with unemployment rates beginning to rise, we are currently reviewing our exposures to star stocks such as JB Hi-Fi, Adairs, and Baby Bunting. And speaking about these risks also, while we, um, we noticed that there's some easing in supply chain constraints over the last few months as well, this risk remains quite prominent, though, across some of those industrial stocks, companies like Rubber Glove uh, Manufacturer and Cell, and also building products group James Hardy, they cut their earnings guidance on the back of stubbornly high input costs such as labour and energy. And also, we've seen a slowdown in their orders as well. That's right, Kian, and hence we are closely monitoring some of our industrial stocks, including borderline star growth stocks, Brambles and CSR. Investors who are uncomfortable with these risks should adjust their exposure to these stocks accordingly as we head into the interim reporting season. And yes, inflationary figures have been stubbornly high with cost pressures and also higher interest rate expectations remaining a key market risk. Only this week, RBA Governor Lowy, he flagged that additional rate rises were necessary to combat inflation. Now, expectations for peak in the cash rate have moved to 4.2% from 3.8% as shown by the red line on the chart on screen. And these concerns have weighed on market sentiment over the last two weeks. So with many of our star stock results out this week, let's quickly touch on some key highlights, starting with uh, positive share price reactions. Hearing implant manufacturer and star growth stock Cochlear released a solid first half result that was ahead of consensus expectations. However, Dan, I noticed that the earnings over this period was down 10% from the prior year. What drove this profit lower, and why was there a strong share price reaction here? It's a good question, Kian, and I think one that a lot of members would be asking. Well, firstly, the operating expenses last year were weighted towards the second half, creating a high hurdle for the first half performance in comparison. Secondly, there was a slight foreign currency impact on net earnings, but the key driver seemed to be the positive sentiment that management reiterated FY23 guidance and also announced the release of a new sound processor Nucleus 8, which could drive further performance in the second half. Finally, a $200 million share market buyback was announced, uh, which proved to be the cherry on top for some investors. Thanks, Dan. And earlier, we did discuss the vulnerabilities within the retail sector, but investors reacted positively to star income stock and automotive products manufacturer GUD Holdings results. Interestingly, the company cut its dividend by 17%, but the company's debt levels remains quite elevated. So Dan, uh, what drove the positive share price reaction in this case? Yeah, well, Ken, heading into the result, we were monitoring some of those active risks, those being the amount of debt on its balance sheet, the recent performance of its APG acquisition, and how the semiconductor shortages had been constraining the vehicle supply market. Now, what we saw in the result was that modest short interest had been building to around 5%. And given the, the management's positive outlook commentary, with their earnings momentum continuing into the second half, the shorts had to cover their, their interest, which led to a strong volatility on the upside on the day. Yeah, with the high short interest, that could lead to 
a lot of volatility. But uh, I believe GUD, they made a prudent decision also by reducing their dividend because this allows the funds to offset its large debt burden and also mitigate some of that insolvency risk. Meanwhile, the gross dividend yield remains quite uh, high. And so it provides that buffer despite the possibility that forward dividends could be revised lower. And now moving on to a more defensive retailer, Borderline Star Growth Stock, Treasury Wines. They produce a seemingly positive result with earnings up by about 19%. Even the CEO, he stated that rapid interest rate rises are having no effect on consumers spending more than $30 per bottle. Yet the share price was sold down, Dan, on the day. Yeah, Cam, what investors seem to be focusing on was the slower than expected growth rates out of the US, especially within the cheap wine categories between $11 and $15. In addition, the market had some questions around the 35% drop in operating cash flows, which occurred due to higher inventory levels. Yes, we do need to keep a close eye on those inventory levels and also the sustainability of cash flows, which could impact the stock's financial health and also earnings quality. But for now, the company's strategy of shifting away from China to other parts of the world is beginning to bear some fruit. And also, on the topic of negative reactions, Star Income Stock, Commonwealth Bank, they reported a 9% rise in cash earnings and lifted its interim dividend by 20%. This was in line with market expectations. But then, why did the share price fall by 6% on the day? Yeah, Ken, well, behind the numbers, investors started to question whether its net interest margins had peaked with funding cost pressures and loan impairments expected to rise in the near future. In addition, competition for mortgages remains intense. As a result, we notice a significant detraction in its net profit margin, which is why it was removed from the star stock status. Yes, but uh, from an income perspective, the dividend should remain sustainable. And that's on the back of positive earnings growth and also those positive earnings revisions. The bank is on a gross dividend yield of 6.3% and is expected to go ex-dividend on the 22nd of February. And unfortunately, during the week, we had to let go of online classifieds business, carsales.com. The company's financial health deteriorated from strong to distress, and that was due to a rise in debt from the $1.2 billion acquisition of Trader Interactive. Yeah, that's right, Kian. And what it seemed to be is the combination of a high debt balance and its low proportion of tangible assets, which saw a deterioration in its balance sheet ratios, of course, causing its financial health to move into distress. We believe that the insolvency risk is currently high, especially given the possibility of heading into a trading downturn, which we're concerned about. And I... Uh find it quite interesting that uh, despite the high gearing, there are media rumours that the company wants to take on another offshore acquisition, possibly Web Motors in Brazil. And this could stretch the company's resources further. So you know, for us, I think we would prefer to wait on the sidelines for now until these kind of risks subside. Absolutely, Kian. And moving on to the corporate calendar, next week appears to be an even busier one with the release of many star stock results. Please refer to our corporate calendar for more details, including the ex-dividend dates for our star income stocks. Now to Under the Microscope this week, we take a closer look at Star Entertainment with the code SGR. Now, they've received media attention of late due to proposed changes to pokey machine tax in New South Wales. Dan, why does the company have an unsatisfactory financial health rating? And what is causing the negative investor sentiment on this stock? Well, Ken, for Star, it really has faced many challenges going from COVID, where its casino and hotel businesses were shut down, to the very public regulatory review. Now to the proposed changes in New South Wales tax rates and also the opening of competitor Crown in Sydney. Now, these uh, factors have impacted its cash flow significantly in recent years and also caused a rise in debt due to the ongoing investment in its Queen's Wharf development in Brisbane. Yeah, I also noticed that uh, in its trading updates, Star cut its earnings guidance and impaired its asset values as well. And with the amount of debt on its balance sheet, it may be forced to sell its properties at a discount or even engage in a highly dilutive capital raising. 
That's right, Kia. And Star stated that given the rising competition in Sydney, increased regulation and proposed tax changes, the value of its Sydney operations could be far lower than its current reported value, hence resulting in a significant impairment. This means that funding could be even more difficult to reorganise, resulting in, like you said, a significantly discounted capital raise, which could potentially further destroy shareholder value. Yeah, and under Golden Rule 5, investors need to be mindful of the significant discount to consensus price target, which can be quite misleading here. The active risks are significant, and with poor financial health and rising short interest, we do feel that this stock is a potential value trap. Those who want exposure to this sector, though, can consider our star growth stocks. We've got gaming company, Aristocrat Leisure, or even online lottery platform provider, Jumbo Interactive. For investors requiring a regular income in retirement, it is important to keep track of dividend payments, especially with those upcoming ex-dividend dates for your stocks. So an interesting question for members this week is, how can we monitor those dividend information on Stock Doctor? Well, Kian, on the Nine Golden Rules page, the trend in dividend per share, gross dividend yield, and franking can be found under the income criteria. Members can also see the upcoming ex-dividend date here as well. They can also find this information under the corporate events tag at the top of the screen. And for even further detail, members can refer to the dividend section well, they'll find a track record of dividend payments, split between final and interim periods, a few comparison charts, the forecast dividend yield, payout ratio, and days until next ex-dividend date. Yes, and to look for upcoming opportunities, um, Dan, you can also view a list of stocks with upcoming dividends by referring to the pending dividend section under tools. And uh, within your watch list, you will also be able to sort companies by next ex-dividend date or by other fields, including the gross dividend yield forecast year one. And to keep track of upcoming dividend payments, you can refer to our corporate calendar or set up alerts to inform you via email if your ex-dividend date is approaching. And lastly, during reporting season, to help you analyse how a stock reacts to ex-dividend dates, you can refer to the advanced charting tool. Here, just enter in your stock, then a time period of at least five years, and finally, select the ex-dividend dates under the events tab on the left. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to contact our client services team. That's all we have time for, but thanks for joining our discussions today, Dan. Yeah, it's been quite a busy week here and only getting busier from here. So it was good to join in while I can and talk to our members today. Yeah, I'm sure they all will appreciate it. But just a reminder, also that our Lincoln Live webinar is on Monday. So please come along to ask our panel of experts on stocks, portfolio strategy, or how to use Stock Doctor. So just to summarize this uh, week's episode, share price reactions can be volatile. So ensure you maintain a well-diversified portfolio and are comfortable with those active risks of your holdings. Use the Stock Doctor tools to help you manage your portfolio, including keeping track of your upcoming dividend payments. Take care and have a happy, healthy and prosperous week, everyone.